stronger already. Stretch your wings, Sunan. Too old, much too heavy. Having trouble, farmer. Rose, is that you? It is. My daughter, my child. I can scarcely believe it. You are a little confused. I've been longing to speak to you again. 
I've never spoken to you before. Rose, Rose, do not jest with your father and his failing eyes. Um, very well. It is good to see you. Such a pleasure to have you at my side, Rose. But I'm so tired, so very tired. I cannot move these crates to shelter. Yes, Rose, right there. You were always a very clever child. Put the others there as well. Grown up to be quite strong. That's the last of them. Come join me, Rose. It's been ages since we had a chat. White roses. Once we named you, it became your... Rose, you're such a help. Let us reminisce, shall we? The tale of how I courted your mother. You never tire of that one. Well, as a young man, I was sent to a great lord to help with his livestock. That first day, I brought the cows in from the field, and there was this milkmaid. Her smile like sunshine in a storm. I fancied her. She fancied me. We found our way to a storeroom to make better acquaintance. Sleep well, old friend. White roses. Once we named you, it became your mother's favorite flower. The rose bush we planted by your mother's grave has grown all the way up the old oak tree. You remember? Just outside there. Remember Fidelis? He'd never leave your side.
<laughs> then? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, what, what was I saying? Ah, uh, the Lord wandered in and caught us making merry. He fell into a dark rage and raised his axe, and me wearing nothing but a smile. Your mother had a quick wit. Why, master, she said, this boy can fetch you more milk than you'd ever have use for. Well, the Lord liked his milk, so says he, bring me this milk, and perhaps I'll show mercy. We threw in our smocks and ran for the cow pen, milked the cows in a frenzy and carried back two buckets. The Lord spooned off some cream to taste. Satisfied, he had his servant set the milk in the shade and declared more. In a thrice, master, your mother said, and we ran outside. How will we get more, I asked. The cows are spent. I must know what happened. <laughs> yes. Oh. <clears throat> well, the cows are spent. Your mother bade me not to be a ninny. She led me in a circle back to the buckets in the shade. We'll bring him these again and call them new. So we brought the master the same milk again. Again he was pleased. Again he asked for more. And again we circled around. Soon the master had ten buckets by his count. So he gave us his blessing. We ran for the stables, stole a horse, and never looked back. Not long after you were born, the pinkest little babe a father could hope for. We named you Rose. After the cow. That reminds me. Your mother's ring. She wanted you to have it. Here. I... I do not know what to say. You should keep it to remember, Mother. Such a sweet girl. I'll bequeath it to you when the time comes. I must go, Father. Take care. Such a delight to see you, Rose. Come back soon.
These men of God, festooned in gold and silver. It is enough to make one blind. We are blind of now. Lanius was our only king. He saw straight and fought alongside Arturius. We have been blind ever since. from home, Norseman. Uh, I may be, <laughs> but my 60 winters have not slaked my taste for raiding. And I have the finest crew on the sea. You have no crew. Do you not see them? Stout fellows all. And you, make yourself useful and help prepare the ship, friend. Look around you. There's no end of preparations we must do. Start where you will. Oh, yes! Bring ore! We'll need to repair weapons and shields. But you have no blacksmith. Ah, nonsense. Blackbjorn is about somewhere. He's our man.
Who are you yelling at? I see no one. My brother. He's right in there. A goblin turned him into a fish. A goblin turned him into a fish. He won't come out of the water to do his chores. Mom's gonna be so angry. Oh, whatever will I do? That's not the right fish. My brother has brown eyes. I've got to get him out of that pond. It won't be easy. He's mean and slippery. Oh, Walter, you are gonna be in so much trouble when Mom hears about this. She told you not to talk to goblins. I'm not convinced at all that your brother is under a goblin's spell. Keep fishing! I've got treats for you, Walter. Worms and such. Your brother looks pretty healthy for a fish. We thought it would be fun to get someone else to do the fishing for us. So you fooled me. And it worked. If you like, you could leave us the fish anyway. We'll swap them for brittle at the market. Walter, we got the fish. Thank you, stranger. We don't have time argument. for philosophical discussion. He said soldiers are coming. We can use these oil jars to surprise them. Fewer reinforcements for Edwin. I see visions of burning men, the screams of soldiers aflame. If we place the oil and supplies near the hay along the road, it will burn like hellfire when the soldiers arrive. Take position on that bluff and watch for the soldiers, would you? You'll hear me howl as the men approach. Best not to draw attention here. Right. Should we hide them? Fresh kills will arouse us. <laughs>
That's the last of them. Edwin will be waiting for aid that never comes. Something wrong? No. No, quite the opposite. At Sancte Albanes, your brother claimed kinship with the gods. Is it true? Is he descended from the Archon's children? The Isu? Not to be blunt, Fulke, but only half of what you say ever makes any sense to me. Forgive me. I often presume too much of my audience. Men who fear damnation, when ignorance is the greatest of all evils. Ignorance of what? What a perfect sentence. I'll ask more simply. Could your brother be descended of the gods? Or could he be a god himself? How is that possible? You don't believe such a thing yourself, Not do you? elusive self-begotten light who reigns over all, but a lesser god. Imperfect and given to temptation. Sigurd is only a man, the son of a king and my brother. He may think highly of himself, but he is no god. Yet it's possible his line of kings was fathered by a god, in ages past. We haven't time for these fantasies, Fulke. It's time I regroup with Gidrich, to see how his assault preparations are coming along. Godspeed, Eivor. I will stay here, to pray for the souls of the dead before I join you. Gidrich. Eivor, have you dealt Edwin a few bruising blows? I have. She'll feel the pain soon enough. Excellent. My men are itching to attack the fortress, but we'd be fools to force it now. Why is that? On account of Edwin's got too many traps and defenses. Her springles cut us to bloody stumps before they poured boiling oil upon us like a summer tempest. Keep the men at the ready. I'll slip in alone and see what I can do about these defenses. By my joints and ankles, you're a... <laughs> you remember that hall? We burned down. <clears throat> the walls? Well, yeah! they painted them with. It's just... Hey, I'm standing here! <laughs> Springholds are large bolt casters. I must disable them. All right, I'm in. Break these cauldrons. This should be enough to launch the assault. Now it's down to Gidrich to lead his men. Aid me, be my eyes.
I say we wait. There's too much riding on this. I am Sigurd Jarl, Lord of East Mercia, and I say we fight! Is it done? It is. And have you laid your poles of Hazel and composed your poems for this coming victory? I am here to speak with Giedrich. Go on, then. Your master of aids. Still dreaming of your precious stone? It is not dreams that led me here, Eivor. I've had visions. Prophecies from the gods. Visions? I'll sacrifice to Tyr this day. The Lord of Justice, the harbinger of flawless victory. Sigurd. Are we ready to assault the castle, Eivor? The sign's important. Read well. We're ready. Give the command. Good. And let's be quick about it. My scouts tell me a force of King Alfred's men is on the march. Let's end this before that flap-mouthed pudding has a chance to hit back.